Bree's mom, and um, today I really want to show you, uh, this is about the moms, and uh, it's a technique to deal with trauma, because you are in a traumatic situation, and I don't think anybody's probably told you. Um, Bree will be, in less than two months, she'll be 35, and um, so caregiving is there's got to be a way to manage it. People always told me, oh, you're going to burn out, you burn out, but there was no solution. It was like, you know, what am I, I'm not going to not care for my daughter. Uh, but that seemed to be always the hint in the background that it was too much. And um, I truly believe our bodies are made to handle stress. Um, I'm very familiar with and experience myself, PTSD for caregivers is real. Um, the trauma is very, very real. I mean, the day your child is born and all of a sudden you have a, a hurt child is very traumatic. All the seizures that you go through, all the sicknesses, never knowing, will, sh will my child make it through this one is hugely traumatic and the body stores it and stores it and stores it and there is a way to release the trauma and it's very instinctual there's nothing worse than someone saying to you it's all in your head or just get over it uh, because you're smart enough to know that it's not rational when you break down crying for the littlest things or you find yourself irritable and there's nothing to be irritable about. Uh, you're going on lack of sleep for years. Um, migraine headaches, I had migraine headaches for six years. Um, I, in a three year period, went through both arms being broken, a foot. Uh, during that period, in a one month span of time, a family member died. I broke one of the arms and the apartment I was living in caught on fire and I had to move out for two months. That's extra on top of caring for Brie. So yes, huge trauma. And it builds up over the years. And this technique I want to show you is so easy um, for anybody to do. I mean, I would teach it to my whole family because in our world now, the news always has some threat <clears throat> coming at us, which creates trauma, which creates anxiety, which creates stress. So I'm going to show you the, ex the how to do this first. You can do it at home. Um, I'm doing it every day. When I first learned it, I learned it from a counselor, um, and then I went to another counselor who was more qualified than the original person. But um, when I first did it, first of all, this is the book. And it's David uh, Berselli. He has worked and is working all over the world in war zones, in traumatic areas, uh, working with kids in schools, showing them this method. Um, so I will, at the end of this video, put links to the information I'm talking about so you can go and order your own book, or because I really recommend getting this book. Uh, it has the exercises in the back, and it has all the documentation of why. Uh, when I did it, I did it for, I just noticed this morning, I kept a log. And every day I would do it for 20 to 30 minutes. And then any insights that came up from that time to the next day when I did it, I would write down. And, um, and I did it for 129 days straight. And then at the end of 40 days, I had, was able to put a timeline of trauma together for myself. And it, this was Bree's birth, trauma, and then present when I started doing that, and before Bree's birth. And it gave me a map of, and a confirmation that I wasn't nuts. There, there had been a lot of trauma. Um, the other thing that you need to know is these exercises are, if you're a dog owner, maybe you haven't experienced this, but I love dogs, and Mikey, my dog, 
thunderstorm starts to shake. Um, if uh, fireworks, he will start to shake. Um, and um, animals instinctively, under the threat, under threat, will shake it off. And then they're fine. Then they sleep great, they play great, they enjoy life. But under threat, they just shake it off. This method is the same. What, what Berselli uh, discovered working in war zones that humans do the same thing. Under threat, uh, their body goes into the same instinctual uh, reaction. So, um, and it's based on, there's a muscle called the psoas muscle. The psoas muscle literally um, uh, is the muscle that attaches the bottom part of your body to the top. And it goes from the bottom vertebrae through your body this way and connects in here to both legs. So it's like the binder on the book of your body. And when you are in trauma, like you moms are, you're instinctually, you go like this. You, you're going to go to protect this area. And so um, lower back problems, shoulder and neck problems, plus it gets stored there. So, not only is the psoas muscle um, the flight or fight muscle, but also most of the major nerves in this area are also flight or fight uh, nerves. And then there's the adrenals, which are the glands on top of your kidneys. So this, this area and releasing the trauma there is so, so important. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you it, how to do it. And then afterwards I'll talk about a couple other things. But this is mainly for the moms and mainly because, you know, you can manage this. And uh, our kids, you know, Bree is awesome. I'm very proud to be her mom. Um, hmm. <laughs> Anyway, let's, let's go on. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be an either or. The, the trauma right now, for instance, that I'm experiencing, you know, still after all this time, bless you, sweetie, <laughs> is, you know, at one time she'd sneeze and I'd be in a panic alert. There's a cold coming on. Now I'm able to go, she's just cleaning out her nose. But for years, we watch our children so intensely. Is that a seizure? Is that some sickness? Is that, oh, uh, you know, when I see the moms and the kids on Facebook, uh, sometimes I can't. When you're showing pictures of your children's seizures, I'm, I'm getting flashbacks. And so I just have to pass over that. And also for me, I, I can see, you know, I... That is me and Brie. You know, I can see, I can see your children and I can see where we were. Um, so, um, I think I lost my train of thought there for a minute. I'll, I'll get it back. Uh, but mainly I'll go into these exercises right now. It's something you can do at home, uh, maybe before going to bed or even when you wake up in the morning. Anytime you're feeling trauma. I know I was talking about the trauma I'm in right now is you're in trauma no matter what because you're looking after your hurt child. Um, and then uh, right now I've got two situations. One, I have a legal aid lawyer working on with an agency and that has to do with finances. And uh, the other one has to do with finances too. It's a lawyer look at working on stuff with uh, my, my daughter's father. So, you know, our basic survival for me, I am definitely on red alert because, you know, we live at poverty level. I mean, I manage. Everything in this room was either given to me or yard sale. <laughs> um, and, you know, you can make it work. And everything I'm doing... It, you don't need to be rich to do. You can do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Okay? So, we start with uh, a couple of exercises just to fatigue your muscles. And um, the first one is very basic. Stand with your feet, you know, about uh, shoulder width apart, and you just roll your feet from side to side. I don't know if Mikey is in the way here, but he's got to hang with the family. Just roll your feet 
you know, just say five times from side to side. All right, and, and a little bit of this I'll rush through because um, this would take a whole bunch of time just showing you this. But Okay, then you've done that. Then what I do is I just hold on to uh, furniture. And what you want to do is you're up on your toes and you just want to do this about 15 times on each foot. Uh, this was the foot I broke, so it used to be difficult for me to do this. Uh, all right, say 15 times. I'm not doing 15, but 15 is the standard. The other one is just holding a piece of furniture to bend like this 15 times. Okay, you're fatiguing your muscles. You're starting at your feet, working up to your hips. Okay, there's six exercises. So, okay. So, the next one is you come down like this, in between, you breathe three times in each position, then stretch over here, three nice deep breaths, and then come over here, three nice deep breaths, And then try and reach in, okay, back between your legs three times. All right, now the next one, you make fists with your hands, you put them back here, and then you stand like this, and first you push back this way, and then lean over to one side. This hip comes out, and you're looking this way. E. E. <laughs> and then the same thing, this hip comes out here and you're leaning back looking this way. Hey, Missy. I see you. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. Now, ah. the next exercise, the e. fifth one, either against the wall or ah. a piece of furniture like this. This is a tough one. This fatigues you. Ah, ah. You need bare feet so that you get, uh, you get uh, some grip and you're coming down this one. Ideally, you want to stay here three to five minutes. If you're like this, breathe. Breathe and breathe. Deep breathing is really important, okay? Get down here. This is called TRE for short, Trauma Releasing Exercises. You can go on YouTube once again, check that out. I can start to feel right here. So now when you start to feel, and your legs might start to shake and that's cool, that's fine. That's the, that's what you're trying to get to, is that shaking. And then if it gets too intense, just come up the wall a bit. Give yourself a break, come off of it for a bit, and then come back down again. Okay? Or if you can't come back down again because your legs are really, really hurting, just come up a bit and stay there. Okay? All right, so now, Mikey, you're going to have to move, honey. Up you go, sweetie. This is my little shaky guy. So, now, the next one is you come down, you put your feet together like this, okay, sole to sole, and then your arms are down, and you lift yourself up like this, and hold that for about a few minutes, too, okay? The whole point is you're trying to fatigue your muscles. If I had just been hiking or doing some physical exercise, I wouldn't even have to do this preliminary. I could just drop right down and start the exercises. Also, my cell memory is I've done this so many times that my body just goes into it pretty quickly. And um, All right, so now what I do this is the faithful kitchen timer. I put it on for 15 minutes. They suggest 15 minutes to start. All right, now that's going. All right, now my positioning is, I'm, my legs are wide open, I'm bringing them down here, then I'm bringing them up a few inches, and I'm holding them there, and I'm waiting. My legs will start to shake, right, girl? My legs will start to shake at a certain point. Um, people that I've shown this, the ones that have the most trouble with it, are the people that are really in their heads a lot, and thinking about, am I doing it right? How should I do it? How should I do it? I can feel my legs now starting to shake. You see? They're starting to do it. And I just, I just let it do it. I just don't pay attention to it. There's no right or wrong way. If you go on YouTube and check out TRE and David Berselli, 
you see all kinds of people shaking in all kinds of different ways, okay? Um, this is a way that you're going to shake off that trauma. And uh, I do it every day. I do it every day now. I had done it for the 129, and then I'd done it periodically a couple of times, three times a week. And then the stress built up again with the two legal courses, the financial, the, um, you know, constant worrying, are we going to be okay? Are we going to be okay? And, and that's besides just making sure your child's okay and all the stuff that goes on with, as a caregiver, all the stuff you have to arrange and you have to fight for. Um, so unfortunately, as a caregiver for our children, you know, um, Brie has been, as intense as that has been, has been easy compared to the fight for support uh, and services uh, because uh, you know, I have to be honest, uh, after 35 years, basically, um, our society does not value or in any way our uh, hurt kids, or our elderly for that matter. And um, they want to, even though it is proven that mom or a family member is the cheapest, the financially the cheapest solution, doesn't matter. It's just not valued. So now my legs are taken off, and that's good. Let them do whatever they want to do. And sometimes I feel like my hands want to move, you know. Um, I'm much looser than when I started, but I've also been through, when I first started, my legs would just take off like sewing machine legs. Just crazy. Um, and then, uh, I got uh, my hands are moving. So... I highly, highly recommend this technique. This is instinctual. And trauma, when you're having flashbacks, when you're having crying just out of the blue or feeling depressed or, you know, you've had lack of sleep, all of that is, um, you know, you know something's wrong. You're very, why am I crying? You know, it's an instinctual, okay? It's instinctual. It's the built up trauma in your system, okay, and this is the way to release it, um, and then what will happen, okay, I can feel my body wanting to move differently, okay, so now it's going up my back more, okay, and uh, it'll do that, it'll go up my back, and, uh, okay, and I always feel calm when this is done, this is, you know, so, you know, I let it go for a while, and I had to come back to it because this is what takes the stored trauma away, the stored stress away. And talk therapy isn't going to do it. I, I mean, I'm very cognizant of my past and the challenges and all of that stuff. I've journaled. I've done it all. But this is what alleviates, takes, takes the pressure off. This is what lets the pressure out. And any insights coming to you, write them down because they're going to, things that you haven't thought of for years are going to come up. And they're going to come up to heal and to be let go of, which is really nice. Okay? So, um, this is the, important for mom to look after the cells. And now, okay, my head wants to just go side to side. And if you're starting to get into your head about this, just breathe. Just breathe. Focus on breathing into your stomach and breathing out deep, deep breaths to get your mind off questioning what's going on, why well, this isn't working, and nah, 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 nah. Hey, you brush your teeth every day <laughs> to keep the plaque down. This is to keep the stress down, to keep it manageable. Okay. Okay, come on, my body wants to go like that now. Okay. And um, now I just, I, I just get my head out of the way and get my, you know, my judgments and stuff out of the way and just do it. It's about, it's about me being in a good place to care for Bree, but first, it took me years to realize I have to care for myself first. So, oh, back to my legs. All right. <laughs> okay. So, um... Another, you know, 
my whole point here is to, there is a way to manage it. I think our bodies were given ways to heal itself. I think if we look after it, you know, it's, it's amazing. Uh, you know, if we feed it well and we rest it. The one thing with trauma is um, your body does the best it can according to how we treat it. You know, um, and, you know, this is the home we live in. We got to, you know, we got to keep it safe, you know. And um, so by doing these things and releasing the trauma, you will be, I'm better with Brie. I am, I'm a, I'm a better caregiver. And it's taken me forever to get that. Uh, I was... It took me breaking two arms and legs to start doing yoga. I mean, you can do all these things at home. They don't cost anything. Uh, you can take a workshop on this with David Berselli. He travels all over the world. His book is translated into uh, pretty much any language. He's been in South America and all the war zones, everywhere. So you could uh, go online and, uh, you know, for me to get to a workshop is hard with break. Um, but um, you can do it this way. You can read the book and I'm showing you basically how to do it and look at YouTube and see the different things that people do. Different, you know. All right, we've done about uh, seven, eight minutes of this. So I'm going to come, if it gets too much for you, how you come out of it is you just straighten your legs out and you come out of it, okay? Um, I'm going to shorten it up because we've got some information to cover, but this is so important. I, part of me doesn't want to stop because, you know, intuitively I know I'm getting rid of stress and this is so good. I feel totally different if I don't do this or don't do this. It's really, yeah. Okay, I, I will though for time. All right, so I'm going to straighten out, you come right out of it. And I always oh, feel this, feels so good. And now when you come up, take your time. Ideally, it's nice just to roll to the side and push yourself up. And there you go. I'll turn off the beeper. Now, I am going to talk about a few things here. About This is all about stress and dealing with it and trauma. Okay? Now, uh, 35, oh, almost 35 years ago, we were doing the stimulation program. I lived on an end of the road in the country, and um, I just went and asked neighbors to help pattern Brie. And so you don't do what I did. My neighbor at that time, one of the full-time neighbors, because most of the people were just weekend people, um, she was one of the patterners. She had to be well up into her 80s. Just a beautiful woman. Clear blue eyes. She was angelic. And uh, she came over and brought me a book by a man named Hans Selye, who was the first scientist to recognize the effects uh. of, of chronic stress. What, honey? What? You're okay. Of chronic stress. She brought me this book, and um, I don't think I even read it. I was so out there. I, she saw how stressed I was and was going to be, and, um, and I didn't pay attention. What, honey? What? What? Are you okay? Mama's right here. So um, what I think about this is the answers have always been coming to me, They've been on my plate, but I've been so stressed. I've been so out there. I was just focused on how do I keep my child healthy, happy, and alive. And I was just going on straight adrenaline. So please, uh, I'm hoping you won't make the mistakes I made. Because um, I could have been on this track earlier. You know, I just kept going. I crashed when Brie was 27 and had to be on medication for a year uh, because my body just said enough, 
you know, your body does the best it can, and if you don't take care of it, it says enough. So, um, and then I built myself back up, and then with the latest stress, and I got back into giving out too much, and uh, hit the wall again because, you know, as a mom with a her child, as much as you care for your child, you need to care for yourself in the same manner. And nobody loses, everybody wins. Um, so that's where I missed it. The other thing I want to talk to you about is um, <clears throat> meditation. I'm going to have all this at the end of the video, but um, I use a tape from the um, uh, Massachusetts General Hospital. Um, it's uh, for um, exactly what we're dealing with, and it's based on Herman Benson's um, relaxation. Um, it, this is revolutionary relaxation. He has uh, his he studies meditation and the good benefits of it at the Mass General, and this is sold through their gift show, store. So that'll be. I use this one. I love it. Okay, and um, these are things that are, you know, your child can lie beside you and you can meditate. Um, Another thing that you might want to look at is called um, Divine Sleep Yoga. And this, doing this supposedly can replace two to three hours of sleep. Um, for us, that's huge. So at, uh, a, I go to a class once a week for this. Uh, but you can have a tape at home, and I'll have the information for that. Uh, these are all important things. And, you know, um, the hardest job is caregiving. Uh, and women, we give anyway. So now you're in an even more intense situation. In full catastrophe living, you know, um, uh, John Kabat-Zinn talks about that. It's one of the hardest jobs, if not the hardest job. And you're a caregiver of your child. This is not a caregiver who goes home at 5 o'clock. You're 24-7. And, and I know you're always on. You're watching. You're watching, watching, watching. So you're constantly in flight or fight. And the thing about that is normally, yes, a situation comes up and you're, you're there. You're ready to fight it or just run. And then that's the, the sympathetic nerves. Then your body gets a chance to go to the parasympathetic and relax because the pressure's off. But with us as moms, you're in that all the time. And that's where your adrenals burn out. That's where the breakdown happens. The other thing, moms, the other book, the two books that I highly recommend the most are the, the um, trauma-releasing one and this one, Are You Tired and Wired? I'm sure a lot of you go, yeah. I go, yeah, title of my life, Tired and Wired. And this is uh, to learn about your adrenals. I don't follow uh, the recipes she recommends, but the information. She's a nurse. <coughs> Phenomenal. Um, explains to you so that it'll confirm you're not crazy. Uh, you are tired and you are wired. And it's your adrenals. And they are worn out. This will tell you how to start supporting them. Okay? Uh, this is something I'd start. Don't wait until you crash. I mean, you young moms... Um, try and figure out where you can start looking after yourself, um, no matter how little time it is. All right, here's my little basket of stuff. One thing you can do is, these are tools. It's like tools uh, to build yourself stronger and maintain yourself. Um, you can take Epsom salts baths. This one has lavender in it. Lavender is very, very relaxing. Um, and if you're like me, I don't have a bathtub right now in my rental. So you can do foot soaks. You know, there's a way to figure it out. You can do foot soaks. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about is things to have in your purse. Because you're gonna, if you're going to end up at the hospital, in emergency, just in some crises, you can have, this is the same thing, this is a product, it's magnesium, really. And, um, you know, magnesium, if there's constipation, it's the lack of magnesium. Um, magnesium to help calm, 
people having headaches, they need more magnesium. It comes in little packets that you can put in your bag. Okay, and this calm you can get on Amazon. You, you should be able to get it in your local food co-op or health food store. Okay, so uh, this is something, and it comes in flavors. All right, for those that are interested. Um, the other thing that I recommend is electrolytes. Um, these are some thim simple things for your health that you can do that doesn't involve much except a glass of water. Okay, so um, the calm. Uh, I also will do the calm before bed. Um, another thing is in my water bottle, I have two different things I do in my water bottle. One I highly, highly recommend is uh, lemon. Just um, squeeze some lemon and add some water to it and put it in ice cube trays, freeze it. Then you have your little squares of lemon. Then fill up your water bottle, put one of those uh, ice cubes of lemon in it. Uh, lemon is alkalining. You want to alkaline yourself because stress is acid. Animal food, eating animal foods are acid. Disease comes from an acid body. So lemon happens to be alkaline. So you can drink your water alkaline, okay? Simple, easy, inexpensive. The other thing is you need electrolytes. So this can go in a second water bottle. You need to drink half your body weight of water a day. So this is gonna be easy to do, plus it's gonna give it a nice flavor. This is a great replacement. It's, it's zero sugar. Uh, it has, it's vegan, it's no gluten, nothing. And your electrolytes are like the, it's like a, the oil in your body. You need it. Cramping is because you're lacking your ele electrolytes, okay? So um, this is like the oil that, like an oil job in a car, okay? It's important to have your electrolytes. And this comes in packets too, and it's in flavors. So this is something you can have in your purse. Uh, I'm thinking of things that, you know, I see, I see the exhaustion. I know the fear and exhaustion behind your eyes because I'm there too, you know. Okay, second thing. Um, the other thing is um, vitamin D3. I take 5,000 minimum a day. The older you get, the less you absorb it. During the winter, I take 10,000 a day. And so does Brie. She's 60 pounds. We have not been sick. Uh, in, we have not had even a cold in years, okay? Uh, three or four years ago, we had our blood tested. We were both very low, under 30. Uh, ideal is, uh, different people say different things, but ideal is really from 65 to 85. Uh, now I'm at 76, but I have purposely made sure I'm taking my vitamin D. There has never been a record of uh, over overdosing on vitamin D3, never, okay? Within, a, within about, I think, 10 to 20 minutes of being in the sun, you get 10,000 IUs, you know? So um, uh, the other thing is when people are putting sunblock on, they're blocking the sun, and you don't get anything between October and March, and then if you, when you are out, it has to be at a prime time in the middle of the day. So this is the most inexpensive. Depression. This time of year, people feeling depressed is because they, I guarantee you if they had a blood test, they'd be low. They'd be in chronically low vitamin D3. Okay, so this is another thing, really important. Okay. Um, now, there's a couple of other things to have in your purse. Um, rescue remedy. Rescue Remedy comes in a gum, comes in a spray that you can just, uh, I always carry one in my purse. You can just spray in your mouth, yeah, a couple of times. It's homeopathic. Uh, they, make, um, they make a remedy for dogs, they make a remedy for kids. Oh, yes, the Ultima uh, Electrolyte, there is a pediatric uh, one too for kids, just so you know. Uh, I would have this, if I'm, the stress is up, you just spray it in your mouth, it'll help, okay? I'm trying to think things of taking the edge off. These are different forms of the rescue remedy. <coughs> yes, honey. Then, there's also these little homeopathic, um, that I'll give you a link to, uh, calm, calm drops and stress drops. These are all 
I'm, I'm thinking something you, you never know what's going to happen next. At least you have something to take the edge off for yourself so you can deal better with the situation. The other thing is holy basil tea. Um, holy basil is also good for your adrenals. Um, this is very calming. I always have a holy basil before I go to sleep at night tea. Okay. So, um... What I want to talk about, too, is like lavender oil. Lavender is very, very, if you have tension, you can rub it on the back of your neck uh, before going to sleep at night. Lavender, if you have a burn, it's the most amazing thing in the world. It's an all-around essential oil. And I uh, always, always have this in the house. Okay. Um, so now I want to talk about the most important thing of all this. Oh, yes. And if you were, diet is so important. Um, the one thing you have control of, you know, you, I know we feel totally out of control, our kids are sick, they're seizing, it's the most devastating thing in the world to have your child, to have a, a child that's sick and, um, that you're concerned about. <laughs> and, um, but the one thing you have control about is you can strengthen your immune system and your family's immune system. Because 75% of your immune cells are created in the stomach. You can have it. I have built up Bree's immune system. I've built up mine. Vitamin D3 and diet. And, um, you know, so you do have some control. It's not going to happen overnight. You build it, build it, build it. Bree used to be sick all the time. I, I, I see where you got what you're dealing with. And I... I know that. I know that. We have done that. And for me, it was always better to do preventative long term than to listen to my child cough, the cough that tears your heart out uh, three or four weeks and you're not sleeping. So um, you can do it. That's one thing you have control. And I'll have my email address. You're always welcome to email me and pass on whatever information I can. But if you wanted to start with one thing in your diet, uh, D3, very important, because um, you just say, I, you know, I can't handle it, start with green smoothies. Go to, uh, this is the Green Smoothie Revolution, Victoria Bortenko. Um, they also are on YouTube. It's called uh, uh, green smoothie, greensmoothiefamily.com, I believe. Uh, her whole family was sick. The kids had... One was diabetic. Uh, her husband and her were both chronically sick. And uh, the daughter had asthma, I believe. And um, so anyway, this is a great place to start. If you want to start anywhere, start with green smoothies, okay? Another thing I would suggest is that 80% of your plate is alkaline and 20% is acid. So if you're, you are a meat eater, 20% only is the animal food and the other is vegetables, please. I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. Okay, the other thing I take, very important right now, is for my adrenals. And it's an adrenal support from Good Herbs. Good Herbs is a company I've been dealing with for years. I mean, I love their products. I love their olive leaf. I love their colloidal silver. Uh, and now their adrenal support has really made a difference in how I feel. Uh, right now I'm taking it three times a day, a half a teaspoon. Um, and I will have the link. You can go, you can call Jade at Good Herbs Longevity. They have just merged with a company named Longevity. Um, and uh, I do use some of the Longevity uh, liquid minerals and vitamins. Um, but um, I really want you moms who are so stressed out to look at the adrenal support or go to a, a naturopathic doctor and talk about adrenal support. The thing about adrenal support is that it takes 50 years for uh, your general medical practitioner to pick up on um, medical research data that's been out there, okay? So the data, the research on adrenals has been out there 25. So it's going to be hopefully less than 25 years before your, um, your regular uh, family physician is going to be cognizant of the adrenals. Um, and it's once you start supporting them, your life is going to feel a lot better once you start doing TRE and, and shaking off the trauma. You know, now, one of my favorite things 
in the day is to read out loud to Bree before she goes to bed at night. And I've spent years too tired to do that, where I'm just sitting next to her until she, with my head down, I'm exhausted. And, you know, to get back to those mom, daughter, child times is, um, ah, wonderful. So, um, I think I have covered everything. Um, so it's just, I'm, I just want to let you know that, you know, please be cognizant. No one, I don't think, is going to tell you that you're dealing with trauma, that you have PTSD. You have caregiver PTSD. And um, you're not insane, and you're trying so hard to be normal and to lead a normal life when your situation is not normal and you're in a society that uh, does not value, unfortunately. I, I will hope in my lifetime before I leave the planet to bring awareness to uh, the dignity and the value of caring for our very special needs children and our elderly. Um, you know, survival of the fittest was not, it was who could adapt the best to whatever situation was in front of them. These are great tools that we have that I didn't have 35 years ago and that you do and, and these can all make it easier, okay? And, um, and it is, you can manage this, you can do it. Um, so, um, I think, TRE, okay, please, please check it out. Please read the book. Please uh, go to his website and find out about, uh, read the scientific data of why this works, okay, please. Um, um, and also the adrenals for moms. Please, please, tired or wired, start looking at your adrenals. Build yourself strong now. You are in the race of your life. You are in, you know, people go to war. Well, you are in, you're in something more intense than that. You're dealing with life and death. Uh, you're training for your Olympics. Whatever people, that's where you are. And so you need to have as much support as, as you can find for yourself. Okay, and... Um, if I can do it, you know, I have done it. I don't have, you know, we, uh, we live at, we're considered poverty. If you look at the stats, we consider poverty level. Uh, but there's a way. If I can do it, if I can do it, and have been doing it for 35 years, anybody can do it. Right, girl? Do you think anybody can do it? If I, your mama can do it? Yeah. And, you know, this is the most awesome ex yeah it's hard hell it's hard but um this is the you know this is the love of my life right and she has taught me more i would know nothing about ah. any of this if it wasn't for her eh. she's an amazing teacher you know ah. there and eh. she, she agrees so thank you and i hope ah. please use some of these tools